Hi, everybody. It is Throwback Thursday. It is Kelsey. And I'm obsessed with this episode you are about to either watch or listen to. You guys all know what auras are, I'm sure. But it's something we don't talk about a lot. And on today's episode, we have the photographer of all aura photographers on the show. It's Christina Lonsdale. And she wrote a book called Radiant Human, Discover the Connection Between Color, Identity, and Energy. And she and Maria kind of dissect an old aura photo that Maria had taken. It's fascinating. I'm obsessed with this episode. I re-listened to it recently and I was like, oh my God, we have to use this on a throwback Thursday because it is so much fun. And I really hope you guys enjoy. And I just love learning and diving into these different areas that we don't typically dive into and talk about. So please enjoy. I hope this is a fun episode for you on this throwback Thursday. And if you love it, share it with a friend, share it with a family member, share it with someone who you also think will love it. Happy Thursday, Heal Squad. And we appreciate you. Hey guys, I am here with Christina Lonsdale, author of Radiant Human, and today we talk all about your aura, and if you don't know much about your aura, you're gonna know more today, and even deeper, Christina, let them know how this can help them in their future. This is really about aligning with the energy that you want to see for yourself in the future that is in store for you. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Uh, We have a great guest for you today. Before we get to that, our quote of the day. Notice the people who celebrate your achievements, wish you a happy birthday, get excited about your goals, encourage you to do better without losing your sense of self. Those are the people worth keeping around. That's from the Radiant Human Instagram. This is the Radiant Human book. And the guest today is Christina Lonsdale. She's been dubbed the Annie Leibovitz of Aura Photography by the New York Times. Um, She is uh, really an exciting guest for us. Christina Lonsdale has been dubbed a Dutch painter on acid by Vogue and the queen of contemporary aura photography by Nylon. Christina is a visual artist who utilizes the Aura camera to read people's auras through her photo lab, Radiant Human. Her work's been featured in the New York Times, Vanity Fair, Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, so much more. Today, we're going to talk about her new book, Radiant Human. Like I told you earlier, discover the connection between color, identity, and energy that is out today. That's right. Um, And... uh, The Heal Squad, Better Together, are very excited to chat with you today. Christina, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Maria. I am fascinated by your work and how you kind of came to um, this place. And so I'd love for you to give people kind of like the the quick on your background, because your background would have dictated you going into these arenas however you rebelled against these arenas <laughs> and then you went back to it at some point in your life um and then we'll get into the intense work you did to come up with your um uh your kind of translation of these photographs um i think one of my favorite ways to kind of just set the tone of how my upbringing was and what my background is, is kind of telling a story about my parents. Um, They met because of a goat named Foxy Lady. (laughs) And (laughs) my mom was hitchhiking with the goat. She got, she was traveling from California, got as far as New Mexico and realized that hitchhiking with a goat just wasn't very efficient. (laughs) Imagine that. And um, so she stopped by my dad's commune and tried to sell the goat to my dad. My dad didn't want a goat, but he enjoyed her company, invited her to stay a while. And sure enough, they ended up having two daughters, a goat herd, chickens, you name it. So, um, and the elf, the, I'm sorry, the elf, the commune is named after Lorien, which is an elf village in Lord of the Rings. So that's my dad. So both my mom and my dad are pretty cool characters, I would say. Um, I grew up in a very unconventional setting, Um, but I was also around a lot of woo-woo hippie stuff, you know, and when you're growing up around your parents, you don't really want to become your parents. Um, So, of course, I rebelled. I mean, that's how you find your individuality. You know, Mm -hmm. that's how you find yourself through that process is knowing what is different, knowing what is yours, and then, you know, 
picking up the pieces through that, trying to figure out what works, what doesn't. And that's basically what I did. I, um, you know, I, I really kind of took a hard left and embraced corporate culture. I wanted a house. I wanted a husband. I wanted a dog. I wanted, you know, two kids, that whole thing. And I embraced that fully. But then I got into this almost like quarter life crisis where I realized that was not my formula. This is not what I wanted. It was that kind of the American dream formula. And it just, I shifted and I started doing what I wanted in in a different sense, in the sense of finding my own compass and really having that awareness uh, and the discernment to find what was the difference between kind of this, this uh, utopic idea and what was true for me, what my truth was. And um, I ended up getting uh, laid off um, from this corporation, which I actually love. They were great. And it was a wonderful layoff. (laughs) It was like, I I knew it was the right thing for me. I mean, it's never easy to get laid off. It's embarrassing. It sucks. It's scary. You don't know what you're going to do next. But I had almost this epiphany where this was my chance. You know, this was my chance where I could really invest in myself. And I originally had this idea where I wanted to, um, I was living in Portland, Oregon at the time, and I wanted to build a community. I wanted to create a platform for people to sell handmade goods. Um, If you like an Etsy. Yeah, kind of like an Etsy, like a physical, tangible Etsy, like almost like if Etsy and Farmer's Market had a baby. Was that before Um, Etsy came into this world? No, it was during like this is like 2013 kind of time. And um, so I went to New York to kind of talk to some investors and and check out some makers in Brooklyn. And um, my friends took me to go get my aura photographed at a really funky crystal shop in Chinatown. And it completely transformed me. Like it was, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, wow. Like the, 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 what I had focus on and what I was determined for all of a sudden change in a second. And I was really lucky where I was in touch with my, my compass to really know that this was the right direction for me, even though I had invested money, invested a lot of time into this other business plan. Um, But really being able to see, I think, energy and identity in Mm -hmm. this context, especially during um, the, I mean, if you think of like 2013, this is when Instagram was really like blowing up. So I wanted to conceptualize energy in this visual format. So as an artist, this was just like perfect. It just hit so home for me. And it was a way for me to kind of digest my upbringing in the new age in a, the digital age, if that makes sense. Yeah. Before we go deeper into your story, explain to mm-hmm. people what an aura is. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. So we all have one. Um, This is the energy that naturally radiates past our skin surface. So you're able to read an aura from, it was funny when I was reading your book, I saw that Hands of Light was a really important book for you in your journey. And I love that book. I'm still reading it. You read it much faster than me. Um, But I know that they talk about in there that there's a way you can read someone's aura just visually too. Um, so, um, so with auras, how do you explain to the lay person that, um, has never dealt with this before, doesn't know much about it, why it's important and, and how, I mean, is there any kind of science you can root it in to kind of get the skeptic to understand it? Um, well, I think you know, there's a lot of different types of skeptics. There's the curious skeptic and then there's the closed door skeptic. For the closed door skeptic, it's just, I'll see you down the road. (laughs) It's it's one of those things where you're just not there yet. And, you know, we're wasting both of our times. Let's just change the subject or I'll just see you later. So um, there's there's those skeptics, but then there's the curious skeptics. And I really love the curious skeptics. They are 
you know, they just want more information. That's all. And usually um, the best way to kind of put this into context for them is that, you know, it's not a matter of belief. This is science. This is like saying you believe in gravity. You can't see it, but it happens to us every day, all the time. This is how we exist as humans. And that's how energy works. We, we have energy. This is what makes us alive. So this, um, especially aura photography, I like to kind of explain how it works. I think that's a really good way to kind of um, have the curious skeptic kind of understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. This camera is not photographing an aura. What it's doing is that it's using two hand sensors to identify the wavelength of energy that radiates past our skin surface. Mm. And then through an algorithm, this camera matches the wavelength of your energy to the wavelength of color. Cause that's how we see color. And that color that's specific to you comes out as a second exposure over a photograph of you. So this is like an interactive filter for lack of a better term, except this is from a camera that was invented in the 1970s. It is a hand-built modified land camera, basically, which I think is really inspiring in the sense that, you know, we, we talk about filters all the time. We use filters all the time in new media, but this is way back in the seventies. And this, I think it has, I, I don't know. It, the seventies is kind of romantic for me in the sense that this is like when, you know, space exploration was a big deal. So I, I kind of feel like this camera has that same ethos to it of let's discover something new. Let's discover what we can't see, feel, or actually we feel, but we can't literally see it, but we can see it through this machine. So, I have done um, this before, and I know mm -hmm. I sent you the photo, but yeah. I didn't have my hands on the plates. And that's what that was something interesting that I read, you know, mm -hmm. that you do. You have the hands on the plates. For me, this this guy had one of those Aura, you know, cameras, uh -huh. and it captures the photograph. What is the difference between the two? Is, is the hands one more anything? accurate? I don't remember. Maybe I did, and I don't remember, actually. Yeah, it's possible. It must have. You would have to, to, as far as the camera that I work, the technology that I work with, you would have to, it requires your physical. Presence. Yeah. I think, I think, I think I must've, cause they're a very like, um, reputable group. So I can't, I must've just forgotten. Interesting. So there's a way that these photographs are interpreted. Yes. Generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's your way. Right. So explain to everybody the difference. Well, traditionally, um, the aura, oh, actually, I should kind of explain how the camera works in that sense, too. Mm -hmm. um, the camera distributes this color based on key energetic points within your within your palm. Um, we all have meridian points, key energetic points within our palm. And what this does is camera reads those points and distributes color based off of those points in three categories on the photograph. There's one, which is everything above your head, lower left, lower right. Um, traditionally, these lower corners represent past and future, and then everything above the head is present. As I was playing with the camera, um, doing before and afters, I didn't necessarily see that this correlated or resonated with me. And so what I did was I did a lot of self-portraits. I I photographed a lot of other people and I came to my own conclusion that really what this photograph is, is just documenting the present state um, in different contexts. So um, the lower left is your internal state. The lower right is your external state or persona, kind of like what you're putting out there. Whereas, you know, your left, your internal is more of kind of what your um, self is, what your feeling self is. And then everything above your head is your present state, your mental state. So there was another question I wanted to ask you about the, um, was it Isaac Newton that discovered the colors? Yes. Yeah. Totally. So Through explain, prism of light. Yeah, yeah. Will you explain? So that? All you have to do is think of like a, the Pink Floyd album, right? That is Isaac Newton. Okay. So explain that to everybody. Um, it is white light passing through a prism and that prism is bending the entire spectrum of light in, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. That's how he discovered them. Yes. Got it. Yeah. And the connection and, to the auras. 
Um, the connection with the auras is that these are wavelengths, right? So this is how we see through, is through wavelengths. And so the algorithm within the camera is just matching the wavelength of your energy to the wavelength of a color. Mm, yeah. I love it. So yeah. you were not happy with the current translations of these photos because you didn't feel like they connected with you. Yeah, they didn't so connect with me. I'm you not went saying that on, not true. It just didn't connect with me. Yeah, so you went on a journey. Mm -hmm. And so let everybody know how you kind of came to your kind of definitions of these colors. So the definitions of the colors, I mean, I should kind of explain. I have been traveling throughout North America, photographing as many people as I possibly can. So far, I'm at 45,000 images. And through this process, I found incredible consistencies with how people relate and identify with the colors that they are producing with this camera. And this is why I wrote a whole book, because I noticed that there were amazing coincidences. Like, for example, people that photograph with red are generally going through change. Now, this can be um, an exciting change like having a pregnancy or, you know, a devastating change like losing your job or um, going through a breakup. Um, they all resonate with red. And this is what I thought was really um, inspiring in the sense that these are people from all walks of life all vibrating at a certain level because they are being um, like almost in the same tone. Um, it, the same theme is change, although th they can be, you know, positive changes, negative changes in, in their own perception. Um, but, but that's what I thought was really exciting is that there was some commonality among these colors that I was seeing. So are you recording this in like notebooks? How are you keeping 45,000 photos organized and figuring out the correlations between colors? And then also, how do you kind of distinguish between people's um, proper observations of themselves? Because you're right. also having to really understand, does this person really know themselves? Because right. if they don't, they're going to give you bad data. Well, that's what this book is about. It's about exploring that. It's about exploring our sense of reality. It's about exploring our sense of self. You know, it's about being able to, you know, have this honest conversation with a stranger, mind you. Yeah. I mean, I think that that is really one of the most liberating things you could possibly do is just be seen by a total stranger and have a conversation about it. That was this kind of one of the most magical takeaways I've taken away from the project and, and been so lucky to be witness to that yeah. is that so often the case, you can be more truthful with someone you don't know than um, even with yourself at some times. Yeah. yeah. And where I, people have those epiphanies. I also liked in the book where you talked about how people battle like their colors because they you know, there is an association with certain colors that people are like, oh, they're enlightened and we all want to be enlightened. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting that people are just, they come in with a, a preconceived idea of what yeah. these colors mean. And what's cool is you're kind of, you're turning it around a little bit where it's like, yeah, this is what everyone said. But, you know, I, I wonder what that kind of prior observation of colors was based on compared to your 45,000 photos. I guess I'm not following your question. Like the 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 typical interpretation of those colors in an aura. Right. Whatever the way it was done, what was that based on? Like who did that research initially and where how many photographs did they take where they created that that mapping basically? Um, I think generally speaking, it was very closely tied to um, the chakras and what they represent. So what um, what my impulse was as a child of two hippies was to kind of see like, hey, let's see if this is true. You know, I have a machine that can document this and see where we're at. And mm. so that's really what kind of pushed me in that realm. And what what I did was I used a combination, what, what I used almost like guideposts, like when we were playing Marco Polo. One guidepost was, you know, color theory. The other guidepost was the chakras. And me and my subjects were kind of ping-ponging between the two, trying to figure out what was real. Wow. And so were and there certain ones that you found were like really, really off? Um, yes and no. Um, I, white is a really good example. White 
um, there is this tendency to look at white as being, you know, pure, enlightened, white light. Um, when I started photographing more and more people with white, I noticed that they were not necessarily going through um, what they would describe as an enlightened experience. They would self-admittedly say, I have too much on my plate. There's so much going on. I'm overwhelmed. Um, and oftentimes that energetic overwhelm would show up in whatever color attribute that white was associated with. So it's like, I've never photographed it, just a pure white aura. Um, what I've found is that there are colorations that are saturated with white. And so that just means that th that person is just experiencing a extreme sense of that color. If you think about it, white is every color at the same time. So it's just almost like energetic boom. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's a, I, I was, um, I was laughing last night with Kelsey where I was like, it's like, it's like the, the super mushroom from super Mario bros. Mm -hmm. It just like makes everything bigger and stronger and crazier. So if you have like white and blue, for example, it's like you can be going through a moment in time where you are either being, you know, it's like, it's like a, it's like a higher take a leap of faith or process some, um, a lot of feelings. Interesting. Because blue is, has a lot to do with trust and emotions. Do you think um, your aura, did you find that your aura affected your subject's aura? Um, yes and no. I think because it's I more really energy in the room, it, right? It, yeah. Um, and that's why I use the dome. The dome to me was um, almost like a safe portal that I could give my subjects where they were not energetically sensitive to their, you know, surroundings where it was just a, a almost like a, a, a tent. controlled environment. Yeah. Everything's black on the inside, black floor, black cords. There is not, I always wear black. Um, so you're really not interacting with me too much at the time of being photographed. Um, it's very quiet and you get photographed and the camera itself has a reflective, um, screen on it. So it's literally, you're almost looking into a mirror as you're being photographed. So this has a, a mirror like quality in the sense that you are looking at yourself as you're being photographed. So cool. It's um, less about me, more about them. So since we have my photo, I think we can yeah. maybe break down what that is. Cause I like, I never um, heard about the quad quadrants before and what mm -hmm. that kind of means. And then um, I know you had photographed twins in here and you said that sometimes they have similar ones, but sometimes they don't. Um, that happens more than you think it does. And this is what I see show up for people that are very close. Um, I, it's just, it's literally, you're on the same wavelength. Mm, does that make sense? Yeah. And, and here's the thing that I really want to impress upon people when they're first learning about this is that your energy changes. I mean, I could photograph you the next day and you could totally have a different color. It just depends on your energetic makeup and mm. how you respond, not only to your internal environment, but your external environment. So there's a lot of variables here. Um, so, and that's why photo photography is so exciting is that you can actually capture this, you know, in the moment and be able to, you know, save it for later, reflect by, back on it or share it as an experience in the sense that this is really beautiful photograph of both and your mother sharing a common experience. You know, when you're going through like a, a white blue scenario, this is like you are almost like energetic overwhelm where you could be really be challenged in a lot of like next level kind of ways where it could be. And, and I leave space for this to be true. It could be enlightenment. It just challenged our it challenges our understanding of what enlightenment actually is. It's not a kumbaya moment. It, maybe it is, maybe it's not. It could be just this in extreme kind of almost God shot, if you will, where you are um, open to a lot of energies. Yeah. So Kelsey's going to put up the photo so everybody could see really quick. And I know you have it probably on your phone at this point, so you won't see it on the screen, but everybody okay, else will. I can bring will. it up. Um, Everybody else will get to see it. I've flashed it a couple times for them. Oh, you did? You okay. We're talking. Okay, good. It's a pretty picture. That's so cool. Um, yeah. And then I see the Hands of Light book behind you. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Book. You know, it's a really good anchor for me. I really love being able to have, um, it, it's almost like uh, that influence still, mm -hmm. you know, that was a really pure, strong influence for me as, as a young adult. And, um, and the next one over is James Terrell. He's a huge, strong influence for me as well. Mm -hmm. So 
I like to think that Radiant Human shares both Hands of Light and James Torello. I love it. All right. Did you find the picture? I got it. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. So tell us what you see so that we can start with those colors and then whatever colors are not present there, you can then tell us what the other colors in the color wheel will mean. Because the other thing that was interesting is I didn't see any ones in here that look like mine. Yeah, it is rare. It is, it's a rare color. And this is a coloration that, you know, when I do see it, it's a coloration that shows up for people that are going through it. Um, I know that this can also be a really overwhelming experience where you could probably feel very energetically sensitive, very vulnerable, um, because blue is all about feeling your environment. Um, I, I use the analogy of having a strong sense of smell, whereas blues have a strong sense of feel. You know, so it's like you could feel somebody's bad mood from across the room. It's something that can be very distracting for you. So your environment is more important for you than most people, if that makes sense, Mm -hmm. Um, which is also why blues tend to um, have a really hard time with conflict because they feel that conflict, that energy so deeply. So um, a healthy blue will learn off the get-go that saying no is a really good um, tool for them. Uh, Having boundaries with loved ones is a very good tool for them. Having boundaries for their environments are very good tools for them to energetically protect themselves. Uh, Just because you absorb everything. Mm -hmm. You just have a stronger antenna, let's say, than your average Joe. Oh my God, Um, that's so crazy that you say the antenna because we had Adam Carolla on the show. Kev, remember when he said like you've said, his antenna is really high. My antenna is really high. Yes. And isn't yeah, it interesting? Very that intuitive. Kevin always is like, I'm just coaching you, but he gets like really like intense or whatever. And I'm like, Kevin, I can't handle it. I love you. I can't yeah. handle it. It's too much. It's yeah. too much for me. And so yeah. when you say the sense of feeling, I also have the crazy sense of nose too, but that's a side story. Go ahead. <laughs> so you got double. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which might account for all this white also, you know, you could go into energetic overload easily. Mm-hmm. And that's just kind of the, and that's what I like to kind of press upon people as well is that there's no hierarchy of color. Every color goes, has a mixed bag, let's say. Um, for blues, it's that sensitivity. It's that energetic overwhelm. Um, you know, I I could go through all the colors, but it is like literally wrote a whole book about it. So I don't know how much you want me to go into depth on each of the colors, but I can go through kind of general terms, whereas red, um, they are really tangible physical types that is almost like proof is in the pudding. So people going through change for them to get validation, for them to get a sense of almost like an energetic payment, let's say, um, they need to see a physical tangible result of, of something. Um, and that's where change happens, right? Is that they're being forced to change something in their life, that tangible physical aspect, whether it's like a new job, a new apartment, you know, even pregnancy, having like that physical change in their body. Um, Oranges are really interesting. They are very creative, but creative in a way that I, I don't associate as much with artists as I do with parents. You have to be very creative with your environment and be very proactive to be able to keep them engaged. I see um, orange a lot for people that are work with a lot of different types of people that work with a lot of different types of environments. So um, producers, for example, Kelsey, I'm sure you've got like a really nice orange going on because it's all about being able to wear many hats for many people and being able to kind of work with a lot of um moving pieces let's say i feel like Yellow. kelsey would be orange and purple i don't know why Ooh. and i don't know what purple I, even I, I means i don't know yeah. what purple means off the top of my head but i feel like she would be orange and purple okay purple is all about inspiration it's all about ideas concepts and like it's about you know sharing your vision it's it's linked to the third eye so it's literally your mind's eye hmm. so it is your vision so when you're when you have a combination of orange purple it's literally working with others through a vision that That's makes funny. sense. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I can't wait to get her cut or aura in, but it'll be different yeah. by the time we do it yeah, anyway. True. But. <laughs> That's funny. Is there a um, constant aura that we carry ask. or is it just always totally changing? I'm so glad that you asked that because yes and no. I'm, it depends 
it's what I call an energetic identity. You can photograph with a common set of colors. For example, I generally photograph with a purple, green, blue combination. Now, there are times when I'm being challenged in a certain way, when I'm stepping into a new role um, like this, this is new for me. All of a sudden you kind of start taking on other energies and, and showing different colors. And so for me right now, I'm showing a little bit more orange. Interesting. With my blue, green, purple. Okay. What colors did we leave out? We, we got purple, we got red, we got orange. Yellow, yellow and green. Let's talk about yellow. Yellow is fun. It is it is spontaneous. It's sunshine, right? It's it's unlimited. You go yellow too, Kelsey. <laughs> but it's also I'm a the rainbow. procrastinator. <laughs> oh mean, my god, she's so yellow. <laughs> <laughs> she's not a procrastinator. She just loves her slow coffee. I'm kind of a pre- procrastinator. <laughs> I can see okay, it. she's a procrastinator. I don't want to say. I don't know. I don't know that deep. I just know she's. We we were talking yesterday. She said like she could have a thousand things on her plate or ten things on her plate. It's going to take her the same amount of time. She just moves slow. Yeah. No, she I gets think done. You know, that's, she kills that's it. A really but like good you know, put it because what I've learned from yellows is, um, and Kelsey, I'd have to photograph you to really see this. But um, what I've seen from yellows is they also respond pretty well to a challenge if they have a little bit more orange or like more orangey yellow mm. so it's almost like they wait to the last minute so it's exciting oh, does that make sense a thousand percent like it's almost yeah. like i'm addicted to that slight bit of like stress yeah. the yes. sink or swim feeling yeah yes. yeah 100 yeah because it's just like otherwise it's a little bit boring yes so it's like it's like being the smart kid in class right i'm like i'm gonna crack my knuckles and be like let's do yeah. this hilarious and, totally. and then do we yeah. get green in Oh, no, we haven't talked about green. So green was really interesting for me. Green was the, um, I, I, ha, I just watched Rocky for the first time. I know this might sound crazy, but I <laughs> you was You only like, did the first Rocky? Oh my God. I am up to like Rocky four now. Oh my God. Wait till I Rocky Balboa, you're going to die. Yet. It's my favorite. Yeah. I'm so excited. <sighs> yeah. This is so green energy to me. It's like, I just want to, um, I haven't signed up on TikTok yet, but I was like, oh my God. This would be perfect. Me analyzing Rocky while I'm like, you know, this is so green energy. So I was like, I had this epiphany of movies that represent colors. I'm not, I'm not at this point where I can like fully divulge all the colors yet. I'm still matching them. But Rocky is so green energy to me. I mean, it's all heart, right? This whole like Adrian, like that's so green energy where it's just, you're dedicated. You are like are so full of love in, in that same kind of like dedication love. It's not this like, um, you know, cute puppy dog love. It's, it is, it is strong love and it's also goal oriented. That's the thing about green that I've noticed is that people that show a lot of green are very, they, they need to have that mile marker I call it of like they need to have something to shoot for otherwise they get lost they get bored they get frustrated okay so now we've got the colors down I want to look at my picture while you tell me what colors you think these are because well that's the thing is that like you know is it green green, is it blue is and there's white cracks in places yeah no I'm seeing I'm seeing white I'm seeing blue and I'm seeing a little bit of green so The thing about white and blue, and this is what I spoke to before, is that this is definitely like when I've seen people in this state, it is a high vibe adjustment, if that makes sense, where they're being um, almost like uh, they're just being challenged to either take a leap of faith or process a lot of emotions. That's the best way that I could put it. Mm -hmm. And then when you talk about the past and the future, so you said the past Mm -hmm. is on which side? Well, the lower left-hand corner, yeah. And then lower the lower right-hand past. corner. Okay, but so for you, this is like all one experience. Like I don't see a different set of colors. Mm-hmm. But if you can open that book, you can see that a lot of people photograph a lot of different like combinations, let's say. Yeah. When people photograph with just one color, they're in that one unique experience. And, and, is- and again, it's hard to talk about. I don't even know if whoever took this photo is using the same technology that I'm used totally. to. So I do want to kind of set that up. Of course. In the sense that so, they might not be distributing even the same way that my camera does. Mm. So what do you make of the white circle on my head? <laughs> <laughs> I called it my tumor, but that's just hilarious. Um, you know, what I've noticed is that these these are these 
have in the traditionally been called spirit dots um, where Mm -hmm. people will, um, you know, say that these are your angels, which I have, I, you know, I, I'm still kind of, I'm watching this because what I think is more accurate is that this is a representation of just a lot of energy happening. It's hard for me to believe that these are actually like angels, just like hanging out behind you, photobombing. Mm -hmm. Um, It's really what it shows me is that this is just an intense amount of energy, which I want to say could be an angel in its own way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But really what I see through the technology of this camera is that it's just a lot of energy at the same time. Yeah. And then the there's like that other set of white dots in line on the other side. It's kind mm-hmm. of weird. But yeah. I, I just thought it was funny that it was on my head because I just had a brain tumor mm-hmm. removed. But it was yeah. from the right side. And this is on the left. Left. Which is totally. interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's hard to speak to a camera I don't of course. have. So I, I would say that it's it's a beautiful photograph and what an amazing time to get photographed during that time of your life. Getting a brain tumor removed is definitely like what I would call an energetic landmark. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I think it, it makes a lot of sense because I was shifting my whole life, my whole career, my whole purpose, the meaning behind my life into what I'm doing now. Um, you know, when I, first got interviewed, I think it was People Magazine right after my surgery, I said, anything I do from this moment forward has to be meaningful or purposeful. Um, And it's funny because Mm. I was doing it without even kind of knowing it. It was just what I was attracted to was this kind of work. And then obviously taking care of my mom and the various people that come into my life with what my mom has that I coach through and help through this as well. And so... I found my meaning and my purpose and, um, and yeah, it does, it does accurately explain the energetic overload and how I can't, I can't, it's a lot to process everything. So absolutely. Absolutely. But isn't that beautiful that you found alignment? You know, I think that that's, that is also true in my case as well. It's like, once you make that dedication of like, I am here for a purpose, I'm here for good. I'm here to be of service. Mm -hmm all of a sudden these things click into place and, and you grow through it. It's beautiful. It's really yeah. beautiful. What an amazing photograph to have to represent that moment for you. For sure. I'm for so sure. curious how different yours would be now. I know. Like I want, I know yeah. we, we were going to drive to see Christina right now. R- literally like drive to New York. Fuck it. Let's just go. Let's it's go. only two and a half hours. Right? Get our auras read. Um, and the, the spirit dots I read in your book, you, you talked about mm. your kind of, conflict with it. Um, But I have said from this entire journey with my mom that I have been guided towards the solutions for her. Like, it's crazy. I'll be sitting one way and something will tell me to go sit another way. And then I'll see something I didn't see that needed my attention. And I'll be drawn to the solution instantly that even doctors weren't able to give me. Mm. And I'm like, I don't know. How do I know this? This isn't stuff I just know. This is stuff that I'm being told to do. It's that antenna, right? It's that you are receptive to that. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't exist. I'm saying it absolutely does. But here's the thing. Once you see enough of these photos, you're going to see that some people photograph with dust and some people don't. So that's to say some people have angels and some people don't. I don't believe in that. Yeah. So that's what keeps me like a little bit more on the fence. Yeah. But maybe mine are being used more. So they're more obvious in the moment. It could be true. Maybe. Um, what else is but that's something... what this is about? It's about exploring, you know, it's, it's, it's about learning more. That's what it is for me. Yeah. Which is such a cool journey to be on. That's what we're on the same journey every day is learning and growing yeah. and getting better together. Um, and sharing with others too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so can an aura photograph help guide people towards their purpose perhaps? I think so. I mean, look at me. I, it completely changed the course of my life. I mean, I should actually explain a little bit more about what my first aura photograph was. Um, You know, in the beginning, I should preface that I, I felt like I knew a lot about auras. I, um, I enrolled in the Santa Barbara School of Intuitive Massage when I was 15, um, which is a school that specializes in both the physical body and the energetic body. So I had training in both of these areas and 
when I heard that there was a camera that could photograph this, I was a little bit skeptical, I'm going to say, but I was, I was excited to be in New York city. I was excited to be with my friends. Um, this was a really fun trip for me and I was hungover. Now this was such an interesting experience for me because I got photographed and really similar to your friend, I had, I was expecting, you know, a nice, beautiful or a photograph, but what I got was a low, heavy, muddy red. And I, I was so inspired by that experience. The woman told me, you know, you're energetically fatigued and that was true, but it was such an interesting, jarring experience in the sense that how I wanted to be seen in spiritual context was mm-hmm. not what I was seeing here. And so it really opened up my eyes in the sense of if I believe I'm this way, my actions have to follow. Ooh, good. Mm, good one. And I think that is how you can get changed by an aura photograph is because you are looking in a different kind of mirror that isn't, it, this is a filter that you can't choose. Ooh, I love that. I Me love too. that. Um, so I think that um, people who are listening to this right now are probably like, well, where can I go get mine done? I want to get mine done. <laughs> so is there a place that you do this? from right now? Yeah, absolutely. I do it on my dome. I travel everywhere. Um, You can find me on my website, which is radianthuman.com or my Instagram. I'm always posting kind of where I'm going to be next. How does your dome travel? So easy. It's in flight cases. Well, guys, um, the book is called Radiant Human, Discover the Connection Between Color, Identity, and Energy. Um, You can find Christina on her Instagram at radianthuman. Her book is out today, like I said. Um, You can find it on Amazon or on her website, radianthuman.com. Well, thank you so much. This was was really cool. And I love that people can have their moment in the mirror and they can make the shifts that they need to be who they really want to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Christina. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Marianne. Thanks for having me. Guess who's back? Back again. Back again. That was fun. That was so cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. And I love that you had your picture too, because I think it's just it's such a good example for yeah. everyone to be able to look at and be like, okay. But it's yeah. like it's always changing. Like, it how is. is but that? I did I did like that there that it, it can be consistent too. Like there's right. there's you in there, but then it's what you're experiencing mm-hmm. that is also gonna be the the changing part. Like, I really will be curious to see what it is like now. Oh, me too. Like, I, I need to, I wish we knew. What color do we think Kev's going to be? Uh, uh, I think like some green. dark blues up in there. Green. Green. Okay. Like Definitely like green. Rocky. Oh, I wanted to ask her if dogs photograph. Like, I want to know if Winnie has an aura. Um, oh, we'll get Winnie's aura photograph. Hers is pink, so. Um, but yeah, I think that would be really, really fun. So fun. Um, I'm in. All right. Well, can guys, we hire Beth Biv DeVoe to perform? Can you please? Bell okay. Biv DeVoe. <laughs> I was like, what did you say? Now you um, know. Killer job. So happy to have you back. Thanks, guys. Glad to be back. Such a queen. Such, Such a queen. queen. Can I have a question for you, though? Yes, honey. So when you get this information, like, what do you do with it? Well. You know what I'm saying? You get the photo. She, you know, she tells you what the photo means, and but. You know, what think, do you do with it? I think part of it is validation, right? Mm. We always look for external um, gratification. Valid, yeah. We look for external validation. We want somebody to tell us that they see us so that we're like, oh, I'm not crazy. That's what I thought I was mm-hmm. or whatever. Or asshole, why do you think I'm that? I'm not that. Um, <laughs> so I think it helps kind of give you some satisfaction of your own kind of inner feelings and guidance. And then, like she said, if it doesn't match up to who you think you are or who you think you're portraying, yeah. um, because as it, as she said, like there's the side that says what you're putting out there and then what you truly are, when those are inconsistent with what you believe, then you know you got your work to do. And, um, and she had some work to do, obviously. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, was able to, um, sorry, I'm being distracted by Winnie <laughs> licking her vagina <laughs> in my face. 
I was just good. She just lifted Wicked. her leg and licked her <laughs> vagina in my face. Ooh. Welcome back, Mom. Winnie, you little bitch. I, I like so I like much. what you said though, Maria. Just you can have that mirror moment, yeah. right? It's like I just think that's so cool. Yeah. It's like, okay, wow, I gotta change that. Or, oh, okay, thank you. That, yeah. I'm right on track. Exactly. Love so, it. Does that answer your question, honey? And it does. The event is gonna be called a spectrum of queens. <gasps> <gasps> yes. Can we make t shirts? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. So in. Winnie. I love you, Winnie. Look at what you, you You're the funniest little girl ever, guys. Kevin shaved her body. And um, because we, we found a tick that I had to like extract from her shoulder yeah. recently. And she looks like those um, hairless chihuahuas that have like the big <laughs> poof hair here and like the skinny little body. You shut up, you little bitch. Shut up, Jessica. You, you are not allowed to talk. This is mommy's show. <laughs> this, this is mommy's show, not your show. Hill Squad, I love you guys. Um... If you haven't subscribed on YouTube, please do. You'll get little notifications so you never miss an amazing episode. If you haven't left us a review on Apple Podcasts, please send us a review. It really helps us and helps people find the show and say, yeah, I'm going to give them my time because it is. It's a lot of time to give. Mm -hmm. And as Kevin learned very quickly on this show, you are going to school every day. We are learning and growing every day. Mm -hmm. And learning and growing every day ain't easy, but it's a whole lot easier when we do it together. Amen. Um, follow us on at Better Together with Maria on Instagram. Uh, if you want to email us, just go to mariamenunos.com. Hit subscribe. You can be a part of our newsletters 